Uh, my name is Dan Santos. I'm the Director of Public Works, and I'll be the MC for today's um, festivities. And I'm delighted to be here, and I'm delighted that you are all here uh, to share this day with us. Um, I could speak for quite some time, having been involved in this for quite some time, but I won't. I'm going to leave that to our distinguished speakers uh, uh, to share you know, their thoughts with you. But I would like to say just a couple of things. Um, you know, these groundbreakings are ceremonial. They're really symbolic uh, in, in that it's part of a long line of uh, government recognizing uh, important events in our community's history. And it goes back hundreds of years, cornerstone being laid and things like that. Um, but it's important because it allows us to come together and, and kind of celebrate our, uh, our shared community and what's important uh, to us and so that we can keep our, our community um, moving forward and that there's a future far beyond all of us. And this is just another uh, link in that chain to the future. So I also want to thank uh, all of the people that have been involved in this project, in this, this project, by that I mean going back decades. Mark Ells was public works director. He worked on this, these issues when he came here, his first day of work in 1989. And we've been working on these issues ever since. But the big difference today is we're transitioning from planning to implementation. And that's why uh, we're here to celebrate a change in the, in the where we are in our um, process um, and to get this construction underway to improve our environment for our ears. I'd like to uh, begin by introducing our uh, first guest speaker, and that is the Honorable Congressman William Keating of the Massachusetts 9th District. Congressman Keating, uh, the planning, uh, which, you know, doesn't get enough credit, but Mark Ells is his life, and <laughs> seem, seemingly, uh, and all the people here that were part of that planning. Planning is hard. Uh, you're dealing with the obstacles, you're dealing with the barriers, the challenges, and you get through it. So, in a way, we're not just celebrating the implementation, but we're giving thanks to all that planning that went forward. And these obstacles are not unique to Barnstable. In fact, we all know those of us that represent uh, as our, you know, our state senate and state rep delegation know, as the commonwealth officials that are here, the administration know, this is critical to Cape Cod with a single source aquifer, with its topology, the sand that's there, uh, the nitrogen issue, the lawsuits. We could go on and on. This, this is, if you live in the Cape, it's part of our lives and not always the most pleasant part. But today, uh, that step from all that planning, which would be a template for other communities, not just in the Cape, but around the country in some respect, but the implementation going forward, you are, you've been the laboratory experiment here in Barnstable, how to take a, a very complicated, serious issue that affects the quality of our lives and our economy and our environment, and you've, you've taken it by the hands and, and brought it forward. Uh, in a way, you're pioneers uh, of how to deal with this wastewater issue. Uh, and I'm here uh, to remind everyone of the scope of what we're celebrating here today. It's bigger than the town. It's bigger than the region. In fact, this will be, these will be lessons learned that will help other communities in the country go forward. Uh, we all know that here uh, it's an acute situation, that five of the seven, uh, you know, that... Uh, and bays that are here are uh, all in situations where uh, it's, it's impaired waters, designated as impaired waters. There's uh, legal suits pending on, on a lot of those issues. And uh, we also know the effects on fresh water and our ponds, our beautiful ponds that are here in our region as well, and, and the effects environmentally on them. In fact, the effects on their actual existence being threatened by this. And we also know uh, the leadership that's been here in, in this community that's necessary to get it moving. Uh, 
we talk all the time about the issues we grapple with in the Cape Cod area. Uh, how sensitive our economy is, how seasonal it is, how dependent it is on tourism uh, based on our beautiful natural resources. That was even made more, uh, more obvious to us during the COVID issue when people flocked to the Cape Cod as they were running away from going everywhere else. We also know that the important housing issues uh, are affected by these nitrogen issues and these groundwater issues, and how as we move forward to deal with those issues, we couldn't do it without dealing with this issues, these issues ahead of time. And we do know uh, that there's a cost that, uh, attached to these, and it's not cheap. Uh, almost $12 million that are there, uh, some of that money mitigated uh, you know, through the Clean Water Trust. Uh, some of them mitigated by uh, the revolving fund that the federal government gives to states to utilize and make decisions on, and the administration made keen and important decisions here for our region and the state. And even things like the coordination of the Vineyard Wind, how together they're coordinating some of the projects that they're doing so that the cost will be less and there'll be less disruption as we go forward with this uh, with so many of the communities. So. This is a sterling example of how things can work in government uh, and how things can work across different layers of government, federal, state, regional, town. Uh, and it's a day in, in this community, in this town, uh, that you should take great pride in the planning, the leadership, the foresight, the perseverance, and I can't wait to tell everyone here that, the perseverance and resolve that was necessary to get this job done and how important it is, not just for this town, but for the quality of life uh, in a personal sense, a health sense, uh, an economic sense, and a growth sense for the generations to come. So uh, as you can tell, I'm a little excited about everything you've done, uh, but for good reason. So congratulations on today. Uh, I think we're going to take the model that you've made real and are able to implement here today, and we're going to be able to use that around uh, the Cape. We're going to be able to use it uh, around the country. Uh, and uh, you should all take pride in supporting uh, a local government that had that kind of commitment. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Good morning. Um, this, is, this is a really great day. Um, and it's something that I love when we've got big, we've got really big challenges in this region, right? And this project epitomizes us solving not one, not two, but three of the biggest challenges that we face, not only here in Barnes, but we face across the region, right? We live in this pretty special peninsula that our way of life, though, is, is, is truly um, existentially threatened by the climate crisis. This project ties into Cape Cod, the Cape and Islands, and Massachusetts leading the way with offshore wind development that we're going to have this project tying up with Vineyard Wind, so we're doing part, our part around the climate crisis. We have a wastewater challenge, which um, ha has dogged us for years, and I think I think prior, uh, our forebears maybe kicked the can down the road a little bit here, but thanks to the work, particularly here in Barnstable with Dan and Mark and um, the town really taking wastewater needs seriously, we're talking about a significant expansion that is going to uh, help us um, preserve and steward the natural resource, right, that we sell in the global marketplace, which is our, our pristine marine environment. And this project is going to help us realize what we need so desperately here, which is more housing, right? Cape Cod has been in a housing crisis for 20 years. I remember, um, you know, I was kind of a bookish middle schooler, and I used to read the local papers, um, and, and that was 20 years ago, and we were talking about, you remember, uh, we were, that was uh, 20 years ago, and we were talking about a housing crisis. Well, that crisis, particularly because the pandemic has reached a fever pitch, and we need to do everything we can to advance housing production, um, which we're doing a lot in Beacon Hill. You guys are doing a lot in Congress. But this is a problem that also has to be solved locally. And so by having this infrastructure tied in where we're laying sewer main, we're laying um, the core infrastructure that we need for Vineyard Wind Part 1, um, this is just hitting all those three big challenges out of the park. And I'm especially proud of this because this project is being realized with $8.8 .8 $8 million allocated through the Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund. This is something that 
Um, the Cape and Islands delegation took on, we did this in my first term, establishing a Cape-specific pot of money that we're gonna, that we used uh, room occupancy dollars when we expanded the room occupancy tax to apply to short-term rentals uh, and Airbnbs. We found a way to capture some of this money, a 2.75% surcharge on all of that occupancy, other people's money, to fund wastewater. And in the first year of that project, you can hear more of this from the Cape Cod Commission and from DEP, first year they allocated awards, $8.8 million coming to Barnstable, not coming out of property taxpayers' pockets, additional additive money from the state, not taking away the money that we're getting from the state revolving loan fund. This is a huge, huge success. Um, and, and really I want to recognize and, and thank uh, you know, every member of the Cape and Islands delegation. Um, Stephen Kipp, were you in? You would have been a big part of this as part of your legacy. Um, I'm really thinking of Sarah Peak, uh, who, who led this with me, uh, and Tim Whalen, and Vinnie DiMacito, and Dylan Fernandez, and Dave Vieira, and Will Crocker. Um, this is a real legacy accomplishment, and I'm really proud to see it um, coming to fruition today. There's going to be a lot more of this. Um, so thank you for the town staff, in particular, who've been working so doggedly on, on this toughest of, of issues. Thank you to the leadership in the town council. Um, thank you to Kip and to Steve and our whole delegation for working collaboratively. And thank you, Congressman, not only for being here today, but the work that all of you are doing with President Biden around the resources for infrastructure are going to be a game changer for the biggest challenges we face. This is what our nation needs, this is what our Commonwealth needs, and this is what Cape Cod needs. Um, and so your presence today, I think, is, is really indicative of how um, fortunate we are to have your leadership, to have the leadership that we have in Congress, to have a president who really has a vision about solving big problems that we're facing. So thank all of you for being here today. This is a really good day, and let's see lots more of this, uh, not only here in Barnstable, but I'm really hoping that our uh, your neighboring towns and our sister towns here in Cape Cod are taking note. We want to see these projects. We need to see these projects. Thank you, Barnstable, for being an example. Take care. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. My former boss and, uh, you know, I'm looking at it from a different angle. I am a new, like Steve Azaros, we're new here. But what I can tell you about Barnstable is that you know, this is where I grew up, and you know, all the in, I've been instilled in being being better than it, being being better, being big, being a, being a world champion. And you know something, this is what Barnstable is being the first to do something this major, and I think this is awesome. And, and the the practice. So it started in 89, as our boss, Mark Ells, started it, you know, it had a dream and figured it out, and now it's coming to fruition. Well, that's what an athlete does. We have to, you have to work towards things and then make the game plan happen. And now it's happening. So, you know, for me, coming into this and now seeing this stuff happen, you know, all I'm trying to see is what's gonna, what we can do next. So why not Barnesville? Why not Cape Cod? Because we are on a peninsula. So if we're on a peninsula, we need to take care of our waters because that's what takes care of us. So that takes everybody to love every, each other to make sure that stuff like this can happen and we can keep figuring out how the game, if when the game changes, we're going to still be better and we're going to be keep working towards it. So I'm going to say, that's all I'm going to really say. I'm honored to be here. Wow, this is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to join you this morning uh, on behalf of the Baker Polito Administration and Mass DEP for the groundbreaking for the Strawberry Hill uh, Road Store Expansion Project. Uh, this project in and of itself is worthy of the celebration today. It's a, it represents a concrete step to uh, actually um, reduce nitrogen and improve the uh, water quality in the um, Centerville, Centerville River watershed. Um, while also at the same time literally laying the groundwork and the infrastructure to serve even more properties in the future. Um, we're pleased that the Commonwealth will be able to support the project through the Mass Clean Water Trust financing. Uh, Maria Pino, uh, Mass DEP's director of the program, is with us here today. Um, and as uh, the Senator mentioned, we're very happy that uh, they would also benefit from the um, Cape Cod Clean Water Trust Fund. Um, and just recently made the initial disbursements, which was a really, really exciting step. And uh, thank you and congratulations, Senator. It's, it's, it's been a long time coming to have that dedicated funding. It was a really, really big step. Um, so uh, beyond celebrating the particular project, though, as others have noted, today marks really the, uh, the groundbreaking for the first major project under the town's comprehensive wastewater management plan. 
Uh, the adoption of this plan represented the culmination, as people have noted, not just years, but decades of uh, planning in the town, addresses a, a number of serious water quality problems. Um, certainly the, uh, the nutrient reductions necessary to protect the embayments, but also protect freshwater ponds and uh, pro provide protection for drinking water sources. Um, so uh, in celebrating the particular groundbreaking, we don't want to overlook the achievement of the, of the plan. Um, as the congressman noted, the planning is, shouldn't be overlooked. It is hard. Developing this type of plan, assessing all the water quality impacts, uh, evaluating all the alternatives, um, considering the financial impacts of all those alternatives and how to best meet them, uh, it's a daunting challenge. Um, it's one that, uh, from our perspective, Mass DEP, we've been trying to work with the communities for years to help uh, bring them along. First, the Mass, Mass Estuaries Project, which helped to give the underlying information and science to understand the problem. Then more recently, working with the Cape Cod Commission through the 208 process, which was really, uh, we were trying to set up an innovative framework uh, for making these decisions, a framework that really emphasized local decision making to determine the best most cost-effective solutions rather than those that might be imposed by the state or federal government or third parties. Um, and uh, so I think the, the 208 approach really focused on certain uh, principles, and we, we see those in action in, in Barnstable's plan. And considering how to meet water quality goals, they considered the range of alternatives, looked at the traditional, how to take advantage of the existing treatment system, but also looking at uh, innovative uh, or alternative approaches. Um, uh, use of cranberry bogs, alternative toilets, uh, innovative alternative septic systems, permeable reactive barriers. Um, the plan also uses adaptive management. We understand this is a long term, uh, it, it's been a problem, took a long time to get here, it's going to take some time to resolve as well. But as we go through that process, they're going to monitor, evaluate how it's going and learn from that and, to, and uh, implement measures as necessary to make sure we're getting the reductions. And importantly, also evaluate the alternatives early in the process, the innovative measures to see how they might be able to help meet the uh, goals in, in the most cost-effective way. Um, and the development of the plan really involved uh, a lot of uh, a robust public planning process. Obviously, the most recent planning efforts, but those built upon the efforts uh, of the past uh, decades. The establishment of the Water Resources Advisory Committee, a series of public meetings to discuss all these issues. Uh, it, it is hard work, so I really did want to commend the town uh, the involved stakeholders, uh, interested citizens who participated and, and, and completed this effort. Um, I should note in developing the plan, the town really has benefited from the strong technical capabilities of its public works department and uh, town manager as well. Uh, and I also appreciate uh, the experts at Mass DEP who really rolled up their sleeves and sat at the table with the town as they developed this, uh, the, the real technical details of the framework. And Brian Dudley, who's our main wastewater person on the Cape, also has joined us. Um, I understand that there are some, uh, certainly people, uh, some individual stakeholders who they're concerned with the progress um, that we've made Cape-wide on addressing the critical water, water quality issues. Uh, obviously the town understands that, they share, they're in the same lawsuit with us. But um, and to be frank, we share some of those concerns and we're pleased that the, the amount of progress that has been made since uh, the adoption of the plan over the past several years, the 208 plan, um, but we know that we have to continue to, t uh, to implement additional efforts to ensure timely action is taken to address these water quality issues. And that's a, a one reason why it is uh, such a pleasure to be here at the groundbreaking today. As I mentioned, it marks uh, really Barnstable not only moving forward with this project, which will achieve real reductions, but also the first step in implementing the comprehensive plan to restore and protect the, uh, the, the vital coastal ponds, uh, coastal waters, ponds, and drinking water that really so important to uh, Barnstable's uh, character and, and economy. So thank you very much and congratu congratulations to everyone. Um, you've heard this, but as a region, recognizing the negative impacts that nitrogen is having on our marine estuaries and our marine embayments is among one of the most important things that we can do as a region um, in protecting and being stewards of this fragile peninsula that we call Cape Cod. Cape Cod's water resources really drive our economy here in the region and Efforts like the one we're here today to celebrate really help improve Cape Cod's water quality, they reduce the amount of infrastructure nitrogen um, flowing into our bays, and really provides that infrastructure that's necessary to support sustainable economic development. The town of Barnesville took on one of the, the largest planning efforts um, across the region for wastewater infrastructure, and certainly the CWMP that was completed last year will result in 
one of the largest capital efforts in the area across Cape Cod and will make significant uh, progress to protect not only our coastal waters, our drinking water, our freshwater ponds, um, but it will also support economic development and really support those housing needs that are so critical to making Cape Cod a sustainable place into the future. Um, Forestville is also one of the first communities to receive um, funding, as you've heard, from the Cape and Islands Water Protection Fund, um, in part for this project. Nearly $71 million was awarded to eight communities across the region last year to support efforts just like this. And it's really a unique fund that was established for Cape Cod and for the islands. And so we're pleased to really see that fund in action, to see these dollars being put back into the community because it's not only benefiting the town, but it's really benefiting the citizens and the people that make up Cape Cod. Forestville's really done an exemplary job through the leadership, not only in the town, but through the leadership within the state and the federal administrations as well, and with our elected leadership across the region. Um, these challenges of developing and planning for wastewater infrastructure are, are so critical, and so I, I'm very pleased and honored to see uh, this groundbreaking, this is a really monumental opportunity for the region, and I uh, want to congratulate everybody within the town for this really wonderful occasion. So, thank you. Thank you, Dan. So here we are. Momentous occasion, and, um, you know, you, as president, you want to come up with something wise to say. <clears throat> And, um, but also knowing that I'm going to be a speaker down the line, most of the things I thought I was going to say have already been said. And so um, after running a meeting for a period of time, sometimes you want to minimize things that were already said um, to be repeated again to save on time. So I'm going to do that right now. And, but I will tell you, because um, I do come prepared with a personal story. And that is um, when I was on the Zoning Board of Appeals, really the first time I heard about the importance of water quality was through that process when I was on the ZBA and um, one of the first things and I think I might have even read into the record um, or one of the last things I should say was that right here around the corner uh, there was a um, Cape Cod 5 was moving its headquarters down here from Orleans to Barnstable and that was a big deal and two of the big things that came before really the big topics of conversation was one is that parking lot right because we had a parking garage right here on Cape Cod that was a big deal and the other big deal was that they were building and gifting us a pump station that was going to be used um, to help our comprehensive wastewater management plan moving forward. And at that point in time, it was still kind of a, you know, somewhere over the rainbow, so to speak. And, um, but it also kind of inspired me and gave me interest in, in water quality. It really inspired me. And so when I became a town councilor, we jumped right into that with the leadership at the time of, of uh, it was President Steinhilber and uh, Vice President Crocker and then um, carried forward with, um, with Gusto, with uh, President Crocker and uh, Vice President John Flores, he was with us this morning as well. And, um, and then furthermore with um, President Heber and Vice President uh, Rap Grissetti, and I just wanna recognize their efforts uh, to get us to this point as well. Um, as uh, Senator Sear so very graciously put that um, things could be put in place However, it's up to local officials to kind of execute things and work alongside staff to try to make these things happen. And, um, you know, and sometimes, you know, when I entered these rooms, you know, you realize quite quickly that you're not necessarily the most informed or the, or the smartest person in the room, per se, but you need to get informed and you need to help be part of the process and be part of that decision and, and be passionate about that. And I am passionate about that. And I'm so grateful to be at this uh, place and again it wouldn't be possible with so many people here i just look around and there's so many um, former members of the board of health thank you thank you for the work that you've done to save water um, uh, the work done with the responsible clean water coalition and before that three bays well with lindsay council and uh, z crocker and really um this is not necessarily about those up front here, but it's about everybody here. That's why you're here, because you're passionate about water quality. You're passionate about our continued heritage here on Cape Cod, that we can carry on, you know, the quality of life that we so value here in our community. And I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of that. Very small part, 
and i um, grateful to be here with you all. And again, um, I, I know I speak for Vice President Schnepp as well, uh, leadership at the current council. And um, again, just thank you so much. Thank you for everybody being here. And um, it's just uh, something to celebrate. We should all be grateful. And thank you uh, that didn't continue to rain. So. <laughs> thank you. That collective effort um, is what allows a project of this duration to get through planning to receive funding and support and community support and then to get to the stage of implementation so we can really make a difference on the ground. I think Christy alluded to the fact that, you know, uh, water, water resources are essential to why we are all here on Cape Cod. You know, it's woven into our mission statement in Barnstable that this is part of the quality of life in, in you know, building that into what we do every day, engaging our citizens, coming up with a fiscally responsible plan to be able to implement that vision. So I thank our leadership, I thank our community, I thank the men and women that I have worked with and that I work with every day. Because without that, we wouldn't be here celebrating this. Um, Kip, we still need you out there, though. We're short on people to help us build this. Um, I do have a call to action, though. I look out into the crowd, and we have lots of our young staff here that are going to carry this effort forward, whether it's our engineer, our, uh, you know, our project managers. Um, you know, when Dan talks about me working on this in 1989, I have mixed response. It's kind of like, well, yes, I did, but why did it take me so long? to get up here on this podium to share this, share this celebration. But so Chris, one of our newer Griffin, Paul, um, I'm not, I don't want to leave anybody out, but the call to action is to you. When Dan and I are probably talking to each other, laughing about the days when we were trying to implement, you guys are going to carry this forward. Get it done. It's a 30 year plan. We appreciate all your efforts. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start digging. Marine. Red sand. All the same.